Helia 44, when I hear that name, I instantly have a smile on my face. To me, the Helia 44 is the boat that really cemented Fountain Peugeot as one of the industry leaders in catamaran manufacturing. And for me personally, it's also a boat that I've been fortunate enough to spend weeks on with family and friends in different charters all around the world. And it's just a happy place for my wife and I. My name's Wiley Sharp with Catamaran Central, and today I want to take you for a video walkthrough on board Eddie's in Time. Without a doubt, the nicest Helia 44 owner's version on the market today. And why was the boat a successful design? Well, it doesn't take much to realize why. Between the large open spaces, the sky lounge, the massive cockpit, salon, etc., etc., it's just a really, really good blend of cruising comfort as well as sailing performance. And this particular boat being an owner's version makes it extremely desirable, especially because it's the Evolution version, which came out in 2017. And one of the last years that Fontaine Peugeot made the Helia 44, which means it's a boat that is super dialed in, especially compared to some of those earlier production hauls. We're gonna to begin today's tour here in the cockpit, and there is a good reason why Laura and I have chartered Helia 44 so much, and it starts right here with this space. So over on the port side, we have an L-shaped settee for alfresco dining with storage at the bench seat adjacent to that. Starboard of that, we have this nice little day bed here, which is always one of my favorite places to hang out with. The angle on the combing is the perfect backrest for either underway or at anchor. Behind me, we also have a very nice bench seating, which is just another area to hang out in this cockpit. I mean, we've had 10 people on board a Helia 44 with everyone having their own space. After the stern seating, we've got the davits, which are paired to an electric winch, as well as a magma barbecue grill. So as you make your way into the cockpit on the starboard side, we've got a nice cockpit drink refrigerator, as well as a rare tan ice maker midship. Let's take a quick peek in the engine rooms where we're going to start here at starboard. Now, before we even get into the engine room, you'll notice this boat's equipped with the factory installed synthetic teak decking. One of the line items on that long list of factory installed options were the upgraded 60 horsepower Volvo motors, which are incredibly fuel efficient at cruising speeds, but also give you the added thrust when needed in close quarter maneuvering. Also in this starboard engine room, you'll notice the house batteries, which were just replaced in 2021. Two other things worth mentioning here on the Port Sugar Scoop are your swim ladder, as well as your integrated hot, cold, freshwater shower. We're gonna go ahead and make our way up to the starboard mezzanine level steering station. There's a good reason why Fontaine Peugeot has used this helm arrangement, not just on the Helia 44 and the Saba 50, but also carry the design forward with the Elba 45, the Sayona 47, and I'm sure any new subsequent models. And that's because this arrangement, it just works and it works exceptionally well. You've got good communication with the cockpit below as well as the sky lounge. And then from a navigational standpoint, you've got a really good line of sight to your port bow, good line of sight to your starboard bow, as well as both transoms, making it a very easy boat, not just to sail, but also handle in close quarters. And with your Ray Marine electronics all right here, you always have all the relevant information you need to safely navigate this vessel. So we've got a Ray Marine touchscreen chart plotter up here, two tri-data units from Ray Marine. And on the outboard side, we have the autopilot control, which is always within reach of the helmsman. Another thing that I love about this helm arrangement is how the throttles are on the outboard side. The other day I was moving a Saba 50 single-handed and being able to step out on the weather deck to do my lines while controlling the engines made it an absolute breeze to dock it single-handed. But it's also equally important to be an easy boat to sail and with three winches and all of your control lines leading right back here to the cockpit, it is easy as all get out. In fact, it's made even easier with the electric winch that was installed at the factory here on the outboard side. Just in front of your three Lumar winches, we also have all of the jammers, which makes it really, really easy to manage your lines on the winches. 
Before we check out the four deck though, I want to just pop up to the Sky Lounge, which is always a really popular place to hang out whenever we're out sailing on the Helia 44s. So we've got a comfortable lounge here aft, as well as two day beds, which is the perfect place to either watch the stars at night or catch a tan. The Sky Lounge also provides a very important operational feature, which is good access to the sail bag. What I've learned over the years in sailing, the simpler it is to close your sail bag, the more you're gonna do it, which is gonna lengthen the life of your square top mainsail significantly. So as we make our way up the starboard weather deck, first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of ventilation from all these deck hatches. They also added an aftermarket grab rail, giving you a better sense of security as you make your way forward. And as we continue into the foredeck area, you'll notice we have two large deck lockers which are underfoot. One side houses the Onan generator, as well as the Rainman water maker. The other is the anchor locker. And then we've got two four peaks on either side of the massive trampoline. Before we make our way into the cockpit, let's talk a little bit about the sailing features of this boat. It's got a Genoa, which is on a roller furler, as well as a very powerful dual spreader rig, which you'll also notice the Raymarine radars mounted on the mast, and a square top mainsail. And this boat sails exceptionally well. That's one of the characteristics the Helia 44 has always been known for. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize a little bit for the road noise. As you can see, we're on the restored and revitalized waterfront here in Charlotte, Amali. Uh, but as we are making our way back to the cockpit, it's worth pointing out the additional solar that was added after market when they took delivery of the boat, making this a very good boat from an autonomy standpoint while at anchor. Let's make our way into the salon. First thing coming into the salon is the zero threshold entryway, which I know we talk about that on all catamarans, but this was kind of one of the first catamarans of this era to have that zero threshold entryway. The other thing you'll notice when you come into the salon is just how bright, open, and airy it is, which I know we use that to describe most salons and catamarans, but with the skylights above, as well as large windows wrapping all the way around, it really is a bright, open, and airy space. Like I mentioned, I've spent a lot of time sailing on Helia 44s with family and friends, and a big part of any good time on a boat is eating well. And on the Helia 44 eddies in time, we've got two drawer style refrigerators here on the starboard side. And as we make our way into the large U-shaped galley, under the forward section, we've got a large isotherm freezer. Something that really jumps out at me in this galley is how many working counter spaces you have, which makes meal prep extremely easy, whether you have one person or two or three people in the galley. In addition to a ton of counter space, we've also got a lot of storage underneath the counter, a dual basin sink, and on this particular boat, they've got a propane oven, built-in microwave, and a three burner Eno cooktop. While a 44 foot catamaran is not really considered a large catamaran in today's age, the utilization of space here in the Helia 44 is really something that sent the benchmark for all catamaran designers moving forward. Maximizing storage on a boat in this size is absolutely critical. And underfoot, we've got a number of large storage compartments, as well as a large compartment above the isotherm refrigeration. And if you look above that, you'll see we have our 110 distribution panel, which is where you control things like the air conditioner or water maker. You'll see starboard forward, we have a large L-shaped settee with additional storage beneath the seats. We have a built-in coffee table with more storage in that space there. And then port forward, we've got a navigation center. We've got a VHF radio, your stereo control, your tank monitors. And then as you kind of come down these steps here, you've got your 12 volt distribution panel here on the forward side. From the nav station, we're gonna make our way down to the two guest staterooms on the port side. We're gonna start with the port aft stateroom, which is a semi walk around queen berth. You'll see there's plenty of storage at the foot of the bed in a very large drawer as well as on the inboard side adjacent to the head. Outboard of that large storage area, we've got the head, which is a proper dry head with a separate shower stall. Moving forward from there, we get to the port forward cabin, which is a little smaller than the port aft cabin, but still plenty comfortable with plenty of storage, both underfoot as well as hanging lockers. On the outboard side, a ensuite head, which is very comparable to what we saw on the port aft side of the boat. 
We're gonna pop across the salon and check out the stateroom that makes this boat one of the most desirable catamarans in her class. Making our way aft, we have a queen size berth with a couple of drawers at the foot of the bed. We've got hanging lockers on the inboard side, a large hanging locker on the outboard side, as well as a workstation. My favorite change was moving the actual toilet from the head area and putting it in a separate stall. That way, when you are either taking a shower or somebody's using the restroom, you have a little bit more privacy without disrupting somebody else in the cabin. I hope you guys enjoyed our time together today on board Eddie's in Time. As you can see, she's an exceptionally well-equipped and well-maintained boat. If you have any questions on the boat, please leave a comment or shoot me an email. I'm also going to have the full spec sheet and the pricing in the description down below. And on behalf of Laura and myself, thank you so much for watching this video, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one.